Uh, this is Maginoni, and here's a couple more comic reviews for you. Here's Harbinger number two and Bloodshot number one. Now, one thing I will say about the Valiant relaunch is I'm really enjoying how they're releasing these books. They're not data dumping us, like here's a bunch of titles right from the beginning, and then making each title basically survive based on the cover. What they're doing is they're releasing one title at a time slowly and letting it, I guess you can say letting fans pick this one up, decide if they want to keep it or not, and then they can go to the next one and decide if they want to pick that one up or not. And which I, I, I can appreciate their patience in that kind of thing. Uh, thinking. Um, the second is, from what I can tell based on these two books here, there is a shared universe uh, because there's a group called Project Rising Sun that's in both of these issues here. And um, um, my guess is you're, we're going to see them in other, other of the comics later on. Now, um, I'll do Bloodshot first. With Bloodshot, this is a jacked up story in the sense um, now there is going to be some spoilers, but I'm not going to be able to avoid giving the spo doing this without any kind of spoilage. Uh, but I'll try to keep it to a, a minimum. Now, what we have here is basically a soldier who, you know, he has a family, wife, kids, and he's torn away from them to do one last mission. And on his mission, he gets killed, shot by a missile. But lo and behold, things are not what we think they are. Uh, you basically, right from the beginning, you can see he's bas his body's being reborn, and he complete goes to complete his mission. But again, it's not his mission. There's a, like I mentioned before a group called the you know the Project Rising Sun, and what they basically what's going on is he's a military uh, asset, and what they do is they download different memories into him, different families, different people he's got to rescue or objectives that keep popping up just in slightly different scenarios. And what they do is they brainwash, wipe his memory, implant the new memory, and they send him on his merry way. So ultimately, you know, he gets shot up a lot and killed a lot. And, you know, like I said, they just redo his body, data dump him, and he's good to go. Now, you have a group of scientists who seem to be going against what's uh, going on. And uh, they, they basically inform him, bloodshot that, hey, uh, you're not who you think you are, this is kind of what's going on, but they don't give you enough time to really explain everything, because um, right from the beginning, trouble starts. Overall, I think I really do think that they did a really good job at setting up this world. They, they're making it a very modernized world, and in this, you know, in this setting, you know, you don't see capes flying around. Granted, he's a super soldier type, but I think they're doing a good job. I think the art was really good, if you like blood and gore, you saw those couple scenes there. There's more, a little bit more on its way, and I, I have a feeling this is going to definitely be more of an adult type book. So I think if you're looking for something that's a little bit different other than superheroes, I think what Valiant has to offer, at least between Exo, Harbinger, and Bloodshot, this could be a place that you might want to go to, especially with Harbinger. Now, with Harbinger, we have the part two to the first issue where you had the, um, the soldiers come in and basically surround the kids. And again, this is Project Rising Suns involved here. So, you can see they basically have their knee deep in a bunch of BS nonsense. Now, well, what we have here is basically um, this stepping stone for people to fight back, you know, like the people with powers to protect themselves and um, I don't want to say get on with their lives because obviously that's not going to happen. There's going to be some battling later on and um, what they're doing is they're setting that stage up right now, introducing who the key players are and um, I think, and again, they, they're really putting this into like a more modern uh, world. You know, I guess you can say even though this has been said multiple times and abused to the point of you know, anytime you hear it, especially when it comes out of the word of Lifefield's mouth, you just groan. And it's basically, what if superheroes existed in today's world? You know, granted, you can just go by the route of, yeah, they'd be superstars with mass fortune and uh, fame and everything. But on the other side, that's not always the case. You're going to have the ones 
the other scenario is these are going to be normal people who are going to be trapped by the government and used as weapons. And this is kind of like what's going on in this case right here. And um, I think they're doing. I think they're doing a really good job at setting everything up. Um, the art's really good, solid. The writing has been solid so far, and I'm really, really looking forward to seeing what they have uh, in the future. I'm definitely going to keep buying these two books. I don't know if I'm going to get Archer and Armstrong. I used to read Archer and Armstrong, and I liked it, but I'm not sure if I'm liking the newer concept. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I am thinking about dropping Suicide Squad, so if I do drop Suicide Squad and Catwoman, then I'll, I'll probably pick it up just to see what it's like. Anyways, if you have any comments or questions, let me know. Uh, rate the video up or down, let me know what you think. And I'll put up some more reviews later, so until next time.